Hey everyone, and welcome back. The celebration event started today and I wanted to use this event as an example of why I think it's a good idea to participate in an event, even if only to get experience for it. That way then if it comes along in the future, you'll have some tips and tricks in your arsenal and you'll know of some patterns to look for that can help get you through it a little more cheaply in the future. I've talked about this in the past, probably specifically in regards to the Wandering Horses event, but this event here is a really good example of patterns that do occur from event to event. We've had this event, I think, two times previously. It was the Halloween trick-or-treat event in the past, and there were some patterns that occurred in that. And I look for those patterns on pre-prod to see if they would hopefully hold true in this edition. They held true on pre-prod and from so far what I've played through on both international and the CA servers today, those are still holding true now that this has gone live. So I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks that you can use this, use in this event. And I got all these tips and tricks from playing this event previously. So I'm hoping that'll kind of show why it's a good idea just to play through it just because you'll get some experience and you'll know what to look for in the future and just kind of more in general of how it works. Now, for example, I'm going to start off with how you get the offerings, which are the items, but rather this is going to be where do you get your offerings, your items, because if you look in the help section right here, it says you get 17 items a day from your first login of the day. You'll get four items a day from grooming your horses and you get four items a day from winning competitions, which is getting first place in competitions with your horses. Now, if you just look at this, this just seems like you would get random items like in the cards event you wouldn't necessarily get, say, a diamond card from winning a contest. It was just completely random, but the diamonds were pretty rare. However, for this event, in the past and on pre-prod when I tested this, the pattern held true, there are specific rarity levels from getting these different actions. We're gonna take a look at that. Now I've got this little picture that I made here just to kind of hopefully more easily show it. From login, you get 17 items per day, but specifically you should be getting 12 of those are from the top shelf items. So you'll be getting 12 shells from logging in. You should be getting four of these middle shelf items, these flowers from logging in, and you should be getting one stone, these rare bottom level items from logging in as well. So though that's the breakdown of your login items. From winning competitions, all four of those items should be these bottom shelf rare items. So if you wanna know how to get these rare items here, those should all be from competition wins. Grooming, you get four of those a day from grooming your horses, and those grooming items will be these flowers here. So just kind of to repeat that, the breakdown, daily login, 17 total, 12 of those will be from the top shelf, four of those will be from the middle shelf, and one will be from the bottom shelf. Winning competitions, all four of those should be from the bottom shelf. From grooming your horses, all four of those should be from the middle shelf. So that's the breakdown of where those items come from. Makes it a little bit easier because you're, it's not completely random in that sense. Though obviously from grooming, you could get unlucky and get all four of those being this like first red flower here. So in regards to specifically which item, that seemed to be completely random. I didn't really notice any rhyme or reason as to which specific item from that rarity level you got for those actions. To look at my history of where I got my items from, just to show that I have gotten those items from those actions, I'll show my history on the CA server right now. And if we look at offerings in particular, that history, we'll look at grooming first. And I got one blossom, one flower, middle shelf item from grooming. This is the second item I got from grooming, which was a flower. The third flower I got from grooming. And the fourth flower is right here. That was also from grooming. So all four grooming items today were the flowers. My stones, let's see. I think I've only got two so far because I haven't gotten any other competition wins come through. But one has come from competition win and the second one has come from competition wins. All four wins I've gotten on international today, those all gave me the stones. And if you look at, count up all your login items, like there's one stone from login, and then we should have four flowers. There's two flowers from login, and we should have two more, which are right here. So four flowers from login, and then all 12 of your shells should be from login as well. So I've got like one shell there, there's six right there, and then uh, there's seven from login, and then plus another three from login, and then plus another two from login, all add up to 12. So there's the breakdown of that, and that has held true on both international and the CA server today. You can also craft items in your workshop. I want to talk about this for a minute because I don't know that it's the most 
it's good, I guess, but it's just kind of meh for me. I wouldn't bother really wasting my resources on crafting shells just because you're going to get 12 of those from logging in daily. They're fairly common to get. The problem I have with crafting the flowers, the middle shelf items, is that they require two-star tack items. You can get two-star two tack mostly from opening luck items or from winning them in events. And your friends can also gift them to you as well. But unless you have a ton of these already stocked up, this will be fairly hard for you to do. However, even if you do have a lot of these stocked up and you don't often use them on your horses anyway... I would advise being cautious about this because I have mentioned that the Great Challenge is coming up next. And the Great Challenge objective often has tasks that require you to tack up your horse with two-star tack items. For example, yesterday, one of my objectives on pre-prod during the Great Challenge was to apply a two-star violet ear bonnet to my horse. So if you want to get through the Great Challenge which is coming up next without having to donate black market items to Al to skip the objectives, you might actually want to save all your two-star tack items for the great challenge, just in case, but that's up to you. These stone items here, the bottom shelf ones, are even more meh because I would never give up a golden apple or a horn of plenty to craft items for the event. I would much rather just spend a pass to get the, get the item, but maybe that's just me. So Crafting is an option as well as flash sales, but I don't usually do the flash sales. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to move on to the kids because I think you'll probably wonder how many kids are we getting each day? How often do they appear? When testing started, I kept track for about the first four days and it seemed like on day one, we had five kids. On day two, we also had five kids, but after that, it went up one a day. So that should be what happens this time. Last October when we had this, I think we started with six kids a day and then it went up by one kid a day after that. In terms of how often they arrive throughout the day, so far on the CA server, it's been every six hours. The first kid arrived at 6, 0600, 6 a.m. The next kid arrived six hours later at noon. Next kid arrived at 1800 hours, which is six hours after that. Next kid was six hours after that. This one doesn't count. This was the tutorial child. And then the next one, six hours after this one, then... That one came at 1048. So this one kind of shows that it's not going to hold true the whole time. Okay, just because all these kids came every six hours doesn't mean that as the event will go on that they'll all occur every six hours because that would actually be impossible because the more kids we get, they'll have to actually decrease the arrival time. Okay, so the kids will be arriving even more quickly as the event goes on. The kids stick around for 48 hours, so that gives you 48 hours to give the children what they need. The tip that will go along with that, and this was something that I sort of took note of last time and how I kind of went through this event, was that I waited until the last possible minute to give the child what they needed if I didn't have the exact items. That probably sounds a bit like a contradiction, but if I explain it like this, if I go to... This child in particular, I have the shell that she asks for, but I don't have the stone of wisdom. If you look here, this is completely empty. I have these stones, I have one of each of these, and if I wanted to, I could give her the shell and one of these items to still get a decent number of points, but there's no reason to do that because she'll stick around for another one day and seven hours, which means that she'll actually leave after I log in and get my items for tomorrow. I could very well end up getting that stone of wisdom she asks for when I log in tomorrow or when I get my competition wins. She won't leave until after that, so I have plenty of time to get that item she needs. And in the beginning, when there are very few kids coming in, you should have quite a few items to select from that you can give them. So I would definitely be very picky and choosy about giving your kids those exact items. Just hold off on it until you have the item. Wait until the last minute if possible because once you get towards the end and you'll have tons of kids coming in, then that's when you'll really be wanting to just give them whatever you can possibly give them because you're gonna have more kids coming in than you will items. And in the beginning, just try to get the highest number of points you can per kid, which is my advice on that. So yeah, just try to give them the exact items that they ask for if you can. Wait until the last possible minute and can then you can just send them away with whatever you can possibly give them. Now, the next will be the promo offer. And the promo offer, a lot of people ask this is, is there a promo offer and when will it be coming? Promo offer, we usually have that on the second weekend and the last or third weekend of the event. 
And that's just like habit of all promos. I don't think it's ever really been much different. And the special offer that we saw on the test server was that you would get three blowing shells, which just means that the three kids will automatically come to your account. The good thing about these kids that you actually buy blowing shells is that they will stay until the very end of the event. There's no time limit on them. And how I would recommend working with that is that you give priority to these kids that do have a time limit because you'll have the whole rest of the event to get those exact items for those kids. So if you have kids waiting in line that have a time limit on them, put put those, those are your main priority to give points to them. Okay, so just this kid has priority because she has a time limit. She's going to leave in a day. So she's she's main priority. And you'll get 12 items from the special offer as well. And this will only cost you one pass or 10 diamonds. You can buy the special offer with diamonds. So just kind of to reiterate this, the special offer is that you'll get three blowing shells and 12 items for only one pass or 10 diamonds. In terms of the specific rarities there was a specific that I noticed a pattern with this and it seemed like you would get four items from each rarity level so let's say if I the special offers here I bought that special offer you'll be getting 12 items total and there should be four from each of these so I should end up getting four shells four flowers and four stones from that special offer and I think that was exactly pretty much what the special offer was last time so because I knew that was the special offer last time I looked for that once testing started and then I just made note of that so those are just kind of the ways that you can look for patterns make use of those when the event comes that way then you're if you know that you really want to get these stones because these stones will give you the highest number of points you'll know that okay I definitely want to get all four competition wins a day so I make sure that I can get these four stones I don't want to skip out on competition wins but anyway those are my tips for the event and thank you for joining me today guys and I'll talk to you soon bye